Well, hey, hi. I'm Jalen Johnston. And, uh, you know, I figure it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, that elephant in the room is the dog that is no longer in the room. Uh, if you guys follow me on Twitter, you saw I actually addressed it there. Uh, but I did actually have to put Benatar down about three weeks ago now. It was right before Christmas, which is always a rough time anyways to have to do anything hard like that. And really, I mean, flat out honesty, it really sucks. It's been really hard for me, but uh, I haven't really wanted to get all sappy and mushy and, and over emotional with uh, the vlog stuff, so I haven't really posted much uh, since then. But I figure it's time to get back on track. You know, address the elephant in the room, address it, deal with it, at least uh, publicly, internet-wise, right? And, uh, and then we can, we can move forward, understanding. Uh, like I said, if you follow me on Twitter, you saw I posted um, that, I did, uh, that I did indeed have to put my beautiful Benatar baby down. Uh, I got to the point with her IMT, the immune-mediated thrombocytopenia that uh, she absolutely had to be on prednisone uh, in order to live. She would have only lasted maybe three or four more days uh, if I hadn't put her on the, uh, the prescription. But that prescription just plain made her miserable. Absolutely miserable. And I documented a little bit of it uh, in some of, the, some of the last videos that I, uh, that I have with her in them. Wow, shaky, shaky. Sorry. Uh, I've got this mount on my dashboard so I can be all hands-free and just having a conversation. A little shaky. Anyways, um, the poor girl was just absolutely miserable. And I talked to a lot of people who had been on prednisone as people. Uh, my grandmother was on it. My friend Danielle was on it. Uh, and it's just really gnarly. It just really makes you not enjoy your own body. It makes you really uncomfortable, feel like crawling out of your own skin, and that was so obvious that that was how Benatar felt. So, I, uh, I made another appointment to test her blood numbers again and to see where she was at, uh, really hoping that there would have been some skyrocket in her white blood cell count. I mean, not her white blood cell, her uh, platelet count. Uh, so that I could yank her back off of this prescription, um, at least dial it down to some fraction of what she was on. Uh, and that was, that was my hope, that I would get good news about her recovery and that uh, we could dial the prescription way back so that she would be only feeling a fraction of those side effects that were making her so miserable every day. And I went in uh, with that with that in mind, and uh, the vet was awesome. Uh, she totally kind of pushed back and just said, well, here's, here's what I'll tell you. The treatment for this IMT is uh, a six month treatment at minimum before we really see any sort of uh, real results. Uh, you know, if the dog's going to respond and kind of go into remission, they actually call it remission and not a cure. Uh, if, if a dog is going to go into remission from IMT, it generally takes six full months of treatment uh, before that starts happening, which is brutal. That said, she told me, uh, you know, this is a dog, it's not a person, it's not a child, there's no child welfare statutes or anything like that. You can do whatever you want. You can choose to take the dog off entirely. Um, I wouldn't advise that. You can choose to dial the prescription back and see what, what that accomplishes. Uh, of course, in order to see what that accomplishes, you have to bring her in pretty regularly uh, in order to keep getting the blood numbers run, which gets really expensive. Uh, and then finally she just kind of advised me, look, uh, you've got to look at, and this is kind of what I was thinking already, but she just 
kind of confirmed that I'm not a jerk for thinking this way, uh, and and kind of gave me some moral support on my own stance that this is a 10 year old dog that, you know, Great Danes normally are lucky if they live eight. I've known I was on borrowed time with her and she's lived an awesome life. She's been so happy ever since she got to me. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I can't speak for the year and a half before when she was bounced around from place to place. But uh, I don't have to speak for that, you know? This dog had an awesome, awesome, just shy of 10 years. And uh, really what it came down to for me was I, I did not, and I wasn't willing to make the last portion of her life a miserable one and just drag it out because I'm so selfish that I'm gonna miss my baby, you know? So, um, yeah, in the end, I, uh, I had to make the, shitty decision to uh, to put her down. Um, hindsight, I'm very glad that I did because there was no way that anything would have gone any better for her. It just would have been worse and worse and worse. You know, just either a decline from the side effects and, uh, and her well-being because of the prescription that was curing her or, you know, back to the original disease where her insides just start bleeding and she dies pretty catastrophically that way. So really, there was no way she was gonna get better in any sort of acceptable, timely fashion. And I just wasn't willing to put this dog that I love so much through months and months and months of hating her own life in the long shot hope that this IMT would go into remission. Because there's no guarantee even at the end of that. So, we sent her off before things got too ridiculously uh, miserable for her. So, I miss her like crazy. It's, it's really nuts. I had this dog for nine years, and uh, what that means really is that I wasn't, I've never been alone for the last nine years of my life, you know? Um, you know, I've traveled without the dog and my, you know, my family have watched the dog for me and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. I've put her in, uh, kennels and stuff if I have to go on vacation or go on a business trip or something like that. But even that, that travel is normally a social bit of travel. I'm traveling with people, I'm traveling to see friends, uh, I've got stuff that I'm focused on and it's not really my home base, you know? My home base has had that dog in it for nine years, and god damn, the house is quiet now. Uh, you know, the first couple weeks, I was, you know, all, all of the kind of after, the after dinner ritual of her coming and begging for a cookie, uh, walking in the house after being gone for a couple of hours, not having her there to greet you, it's rough, man. It's really, really, uh, it's different. It's very different. So, I've just been trying to get used to that. Not that I really, not that I really want to get used to that. Um, Cause I'm a dog guy, you know. I, I love that companionship. And that, uh, that girl was at arm's length at all times. Uh, she was a good shadow, that one. So anyway, I've been rambling now for almost nine minutes about all this sappy stuff, but. I uh, wanted to at least cut the internet in, at least the YouTube portion of the internet in, on uh, that turn of events. If you, like I said, if you follow me on Twitter, I uh, tend to be pretty active on Twitter whether or not I'm uh, being diligent with the video vlogs. Um, so my Twitter followers knew. So, you know, I got an amazing, amazing show of support uh, from that community. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening to this rambling thing. Thanks for being with me through this whole gut-wrenching process. I know a lot of you have been there yourselves. Hey, we're in the same boat, you know? Um, but, anyway, love you guys. Uh, missing Benatar. I'm sure you guys are going to miss Benatar, too, because God knows I shoved the camera in her face all the time. But, uh, you know, she's sliding down rainbows, chasing unicorns, and uh, definitely out of all pain. And uh, I like to think she's uh, 
she's happy now. So, anyway, thanks for listening to the Ramble, guys. I'll bug you later. Okay, bye.